Well, uh, blessed people, the Lord Jehovah spoke with me this past night. He spoke with me in such a tremendous way this past night about this revival that the Lord is initiating, is beginning, is exploding out, is exploding into a huge flame from this place moving on across the globe. And at this time, the Lord is exploding that revival, igniting that revival from this land. A very, very powerful revival, the revival of the word, the revival of the soul. And uh, in this conversation, the Lord took me to the meeting in Thika. He took me to the meeting that is coming up in Thika this coming weekend. And you go in the massive, massive, massive meeting. The revival of the word. I know that uh, you people, the Church of Christ, the body of Christ has seen the wonders, the wonders of God, including the two prophets ministering together in a very, very historic move of God Almighty that really astounded the church, astounded humanity, and confounded the wisdom of men. And the ministration of the two prophets of the Lord at the same time, these are some of the greatest wonders that uh, this age, this generation has seen. You have seen your cripples get up and walk. You've seen the two suns, the two suns in the sky above the meeting. You've seen the glory of God the Father himself descending from heaven and lighting on them, settling on the two prophets in your midst, recorded by video live. You've seen blind, see cripples walk, blind, see deaf, hear, mute, speak, paralytics walk. You've seen the pure transfiguration of God, the pure white, holiest glory of God the Father. You've seen many things, HIV healed, wonders. But this particular revival is a very astonishing revival. This is now the height of revival. And the Lord took me to Thika where the meeting is coming up this weekend, the revival meeting. Such a beautiful weather going on here, sunny days. And the big, mighty revival that is coming up in Thika. So he took me to that meeting, blessed people, and I saw an enormous amount of people. Enormous. It looks like people are going to come from all over the country. Thika alone is such an industrial city and has such a huge population, so they really come to the meeting. But it looks more like people came from all over the country. Nobody wanted to be left out. And it became a huge, wide explosion. And I saw the two prophets of the Lord ministering the word with the altar at the center and people all around, those who missed their seats. They were seated on the grass in heaps. Others were standing with their Bibles. Those who were seated in the grass were right with their Bibles open and pen and paper. They were writing the word. It's a tremendous, tremendous visitation of the Lord never seen before. Tremendous revival. This is now the explosion of the revival. After the wonders, the stunning wonders, the historic miracles, now the word, the revival of the soul. This is the biggest of all revivals in the history of creation now, because this is about entry. And so when I was there, I saw the two prophets of the Lord ministering there, and then I saw people, some of them had come from Kakamega, I was talking to them, others have come from different places, Full, full there, taking the message, taking this revival, taking the instruction of the Lord, opening the word together with these two tremendous prophets of Yahweh, the Lord Yahweh. This has really confounded the wisdom of men now. But it's such a beautiful revival I saw this past night when the Lord took me to this industrial city called Thika. And Thika is about, uh, if you follow the superhighway, the dual carriage, is about 30 to 40 minutes from Nairobi, but I saw a long convoy of vehicles entering the Pika Highway. Tremendous moment in the history of the church. And then at that time, as the Lord Jehovah led the two prophets to minister, I saw they were giving bread. They were giving delicious bread to people. I saw that they were giving delicious bread, and people were eating the bread. They were eating the bread and enjoying the bread. At first I thought it was a pizza, and then I realized it was bread, just bread, bread. And they were giving bread to people, and people were eating. It was so delicious bread. 
The bread was very delicious. People were seated on the grass. A lot of people were sitting down in their thousands. I don't know how many hundreds of thousands were sitting there. Receiving the bread and eating. Looks like the entire central province is going to come. The entire, what used to be central province, is going to come to Thika. It's going to be a stunning situation in Thika. And then the Lord Yahweh, he showed me how the two prophets took an old plane. An aircraft that was old. An aircraft that was very, very old. And it was uh, long. It's a long aircraft. It's a big, like, super jumbo. Slightly bigger, though. And it was old. It had been grounded. And so, then the Lord said, look, when they entered the cockpit of that aircraft, they were able to re-engineer things on the cockpit. And a brand new cockpit appeared. And that aircraft became new. And that aircraft started running on the runway. And I saw when it was flying very, very high speed, it took off at a very high speed with a lot of people. These people you see in the meeting. And then that aircraft went vertical. A pure white plane, very white. It was a bit unclean when it was uh, grounded, but it became white when it took over. When it took off, it became white. But what shocked me, it now went vertical. After flying for some time horizontal, it went vertical, totally vertical. A vertical flight, and then I woke up. So this is the nature of the revival that is coming up to seek our beloved people, coming into the body of Christ. This is a very shocking time. You know that I have seen so much about the coming of the Messiah and all these uh, events that I've shared with you. Well, uh, revival in Hebrew... Revival means Shaya. They call it Shaya, which means to be quickened, to be made alive, to be restored, to be restored by the Spirit of the Lord. Shaya. And in the book of Psalms 85, verse 6, this is what he says here. Wilt thou not revive us again? That thy people may rejoice in thee, asking. That is uh, King James. Amplified, he says, Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? The New American Standard says, again, Psalms 85 verse 6, he says, Will you not yourself revive us? Very beautiful, it says yourself. Will you not yourself revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? NIV says, Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? So blessed people, this is the moment for revival in the history of the church, in the body of Christ. This is the most important moment for revival, because this revival is about the entry of the church into eternity. And I don't want to speak so much about what the Lord showed me in the dream, but I'm saying that this is apparently very clear now to all people, that the revival of righteousness, the revival of holiness, the revival of repentance, the revival of salvation, the revival of the soul, the revival of the word, this now is the greatest revival ever in the history of the Bible. And you see that I entered this very old plane, a little bigger than 747 Jumbo, and grounded. It's a plane that was grounded. And the, the, the white color had become brownish. Then the two prophets in there are able to renew the cockpit. It became electronic. And then they take off like a joke. They take off with a plane. And the more they took off, they, they run at a, at a high speed on the runway. They take off. Then the plane becomes newer. I see it whiter. Now I see the two up and I'm also down still. I'm able to see how they fly it and they are flying that plane. And at one point the plane now, it was very shocking. You think it was some assault. The plane goes vertical. And it really went vertical, and then I woke up brand new white. The plane was now new, brand new. In Hebrew, the word revival, it says shaya, it says to be quickened, 
to be made alive, to be quickened by the Spirit of the Lord, to be made alive by the Spirit of the Lord, to be restored by the Spirit of the Lord. In Hebrew. And I have read the yearning for revival. It's as though this land, it's as though the Church of Christ, the body of Christ, the Church in Kenya, the Church globally, has been reading out, crying out, the Psalms 85, verse 6. Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? And he says, New American Amplified says, Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? The New American Center says, Will you not yourself, meaning by your own spirit, yourself, revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? NIV says, Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? So, beloved people, this is an awesome time. There is going to be a world explosion in Fika in this land. And I know it will be global through the World Wide Web and our radio broadcast, the audio streaming. But this is an awesome time when the Lord has decided now, after the mega miracles, the mega wonders, astronomical wonders, the two suns, the cloud coming from heaven and settling on these two live in broad daylight. After all that has been seen, the cripples walking, the blind see, Mama Rosa resurrected, all these things, the death here. Then now the revival of the soul, the most important revival, the revival for entry. And that conversation of the Lord is self-explanatory, beloved people. It is self-revealing. But this is the most important revival because this revival is for entry. The Messiah is coming, beloved people. I would like to divulge a little bit on the conversation that took place here yesterday night when the Lord Jehovah God the Father, the only one, He that knows the day and the hour, when He spoke with me about this mighty, mighty revival, the mighty revival that is igniting here, that the Lord is igniting here, the flame, the flames of revival that is setting, using to set ablaze the church, right from Kenya to the ends of the church, to the ends of the earth, all the way to the west coast of California, and all the way to the east coast of South Korea, all the way to the southernmost coast of Tasmania and New Zealand, all the way to the northern tip coast of Finland and Russia and those, it was the northern light. This is a very massive time, beloved people. And like I said in the past conversation, I want to divulge a little bit more, that in that conversation that took place this past night, God the Father, Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah El Olam, Elion, Jehovah El Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, he came to speak with me about this big revival, this historic revival that is coming to take place in Thika, the industrial city of Kenya. The massive revival that is coming to visit Thika. And in that conversation, beloved people, I repeat, the Lord did take me to the meeting and he showed me the meeting and it's such an enormous, an enormous gathering of people for a Sunday service. This is a Sunday service in Kenya here. This revival is tremendous. Oh, how I wish and cry for the nations to catch this fire. This is a Sunday service in Kenya, but it was absolutely overwhelming. And I know that the power of the might of the Spirit of the Lord is able to bring this to the nations of the earth, that if they too will be able to obey and heed the instruction of these two servants of revival, these two prophets of the rain, the prophets of the end glory, the end time glory, the prophets of eternity, then they too have an equal opportunity to see this explosion of revival, the setting ablaze of the house of the Lord, 
to, to, to light it up a flame. And in that meeting, at Sika, the meeting that is coming up in the next three or so days, the Lord showed me a lot of people, a lot of people, and I was talking to some of them. They appear from have come from Kakamega and another place. So that the Lord is using that to let me know that they will come from all counties, all the different counties of this land. And uh, then the Lord made me see the two prophets now ministering to them, dishing out bread, one on this side, one on this other side, giving out hot bread, very delicious bread, delicious bread. And they were taking and eating and they were saying, they were also speaking. Now I can open up a little bit more. They were speaking and they were saying, how delicious is this bread? This bread is so delicious, they were saying. I was dishing out, dishing out. One of the prophets on this other side, the taller one, was a little bit on the left side. And the other one was on this side. And dishing out the bread, dishing out the bread, the fresh, delicious bread from the throne of God Almighty. And then... uh, at that time now, there was worship. Worship began, and there is a powerful instrumental. There is a very powerful instrumental that was played. Again, a very, very powerful instrumental worship was played. And the worship team, the violinists were playing this song, and it was so powerful that the Lord God Almighty, God the Father, spoke from heaven. And he said, what a mighty worship by his voice. So when he said so, then the two prophets stood, even though everybody was sitting as the worshippers were presenting, then the two prophets of the Lord stood and went to them and asked them to replay that song, to replay that instrumental worship song twice. So three times the song was played in that episode, three times. So the first time it was played, and then the voice of the Lord God Almighty speaks from heaven. And then the two prophets rise up and tell the worshippers to, to replay it twice, which means it was played three times. And then some of them were with trumpets. I see one of them with a the trumpet. And then uh, he comes and sits. So you see, after the song was over, they sat at that place. And the bread, the dishing of the bread continued. And then after that, there was a huge abandoned plane, a very, very big plane. You would think it's a 747 Super Jumbo, but slightly bigger, almost twice the size. So, yes. And then uh, white, but had been rusted and abandoned and parked, and some grass had grown around it. It was parked, and some grass had grown around that plain. It used to be white, but you could see the dust, the soil that had soiled it. And the Lord leads his two servants to enter the cockpit, which was, if I understand right, the cockpit was made, the ancient cockpit. The ancient cockpit, so let me give more detail about this conversation. The cockpit was rusty, but it was ancient cockpit, an old cockpit. Most of the stuff there was manual, mechanical. And so when the two prophets of the Lord entered that white plane, huge plane, double-decker, then the cockpit immediately became electronic. And I saw the renewal of the plane, and all of a sudden the plane was on the tarmac with brand new wheels, the, the body had changed was pure white. And then there was a takeoff because all these people in the meeting were in this flight. There was a serious takeoff. High speed. All of a sudden we're on a runway. And then the plane really takes off and begins to fly. And it flies to a point where I would think it's parallel to the ground. But all of a sudden then whoop, it, the, the plane flips and faces upward. I almost thought it was some assaulting. And then with the control and the plane goes up and the more it went up, the more glorious it was. And this plane went vertical, absolutely vertical in that shock. And then I woke up. So this is the conversation at hand that the Lord has spoken in less than 24 hours ago. And we know that that conversation is very clear to the Church of Christ. Like I said, that the wonders you have seen as the body of Christ globally, the signs you've seen, you've seen the two suns, you've seen the collision of the two neutral stars that I commended from here more than 130 light years away. You have seen also the cripples, the blind, the deaf, the cripples healed, get up and walk in large numbers, even decreeing from their 
residents in Nairobi and many thousands of miles away. You've seen baby Amy get up and walk in Finland with a decree made in Kenya. You've also seen uh, Anne Marit that had dyslexia in Finland. I think she's in Turku Tampere, one of those towns. And the, 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 the dyslexic head, the brain, the left hand side is normally damaged. And born like that, there is no pill to cure it, there's no surgery. You can see that now she reads. At 50 plus 54 so, she now, she now reads. The Lord restored, put a new brain. So the creepers walking, the blind seeing, the deaf hearing, the mute speaking, paralytics walking, spinal cord injuries healed, the cancers healed, uh, the, the tumors, the, the leprosy, HIV, all these you have seen, the miracles and the wonders. These are the marks of the latter visitation. And then I said, how great are then this level, this notching up of the revival now, when the Lord is now deciding to revive the soul, the revival of the word. This going around that the Lord is taking me around that began with Central Park Nairobi in the city, in the center of the city, and then now moving to the industrial city of Fika. This going around and that big meeting, this going around preaching the word, preaching the word, opening the word, and preaching the word, and talking about the salvation of Christ, talking about the coming of the Messiah, preparing the souls, preparing the hearts of men. How mighty are then is this revival? That's what I've still said. After the wonders, the glory coming from heaven, beaming on them, prophecy given, God the Father himself descending on them. After all these things, blessed people, commanding rain to come from heaven, and instant came down. Commanding fire, the fire of Elijah to come from heaven. And the instant comes down to purge the souls, to incinerate and, and clean out the dross, to realign the souls of men back to the image and likeness of God. How much more powerful now when this realigning is taking place of the word. The word now is being opened that the souls are being healed. Now it's a spiritual healing and preparing them for the glorious kingdom of God, going town to town, announcing the glorious coming of the Messiah, preparing the way for the coming of the Messiah, and broadcasting it globally, giving every single person on the earth an equal footing, equal opportunity to prepare for the glorious coming of the King. And I read from the book of Psalms 85, I read King James now verse 6, Psalm 85, verse 6, it says, Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? He asked. New American Standard says, Will you not yourself revive us, that your people may rejoice in you? Asking again. Amplified says, Will you not Revive us again, that a people may rejoice in you. And I will say, will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? I finish again with King James saying, 85, 6, Psalm 85, 6. Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? And then, Inside that conversation that took place yesterday, beloved people, you could see as though the nations, this is, this is what the nations are crying for now, of course. Every single church, every single country, every single land, every people of this earth, every people, they are crying to be revived because they can see that the coming of the Messiah has drawn nigh and there has to be some, some quantum shift, some, some astronomical shift for there to be substantive gain and change and transformation. But you see very clearly, again, within that same conversation, as the plane went up, as the plane went up in that dream yesterday, then the father spoke. The father spoke and said, look, you was a very old plane, but when you entered there, the cockpit became electronic, it became new now. The father spoke, that's what I'm divulging to you now. But I'm saying, 
that now is an awesome time for the nations of the earth. Because he's saying that he's speaking to the church in very clear terms about the coming of the Messiah. And you see in John chapter 3 verse 7, King James, he says, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Hallelujah. And that is after Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Yahweh. And verse 7, he says beautifully, Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. And then when you go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5, he says, Even when we were dead in sins, this is uh, King James, has quick, has quickened us together with Christ by grace, Ye are saved. Again, Ephesians chapter 2, I'm reading, uh, out, I'm reading right now, again, I want to repeat King James. It says, Ephesians 2, 5, Even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. And Amplified says, Ephesians 2, 5, Amplified says, Even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and transgressions and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ himself, the same new life with which he quickened him, for it is by grace, his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. How powerful, beloved people. But I'm raising forth these scriptures here to you, because the quickening, you can see the dross and the decay of that aircraft. The aircraft was rusted, was, was drossed up, was decayed, the grass has grown around it. And then he says, that by his grace he has now quickened, meaning he has revived. And I told you in Hebrew, the Shaya, that the reviving of the church, revival means restoring back to its own, own place, restoring to making whole now by the Spirit of the Lord, resuscitating, bringing back to life, making alive again by the Spirit of the Lord. And it says even when the church, even when the church was caught up in a lot of trespasses, Shortcoming, transgression, slain by their sin, slain and dead to sin. And he says, now there is the quickening of the hearts and the souls of the believers. The Spirit of the Lord is now spreading out the mission of God, the agenda of the Lord right now on the earth to prepare the glorious church for the glorious coming of the Messiah. To establish the healing of the soul of the church, the reviving of the souls of men, that all men, all nations, all peoples may be given a chance, whether through the web radio, whether through web streaming, whichever the way you can receive the message and the instruction of Jehovah Elohim, when he says, repent, turn ye away from sin, and receive Christ Jesus, and be washed in the Holy Spirit. Be baptized in water and be totally drenched in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Baptized with fire and anointed with the Spirit of the Lord and prepare ye the way of the Lord. Every single soul on the earth can listen to that voice and respond to that voice and prepare for eternity. Because he says, even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings, and transgression, the dross, the rust of that aircraft. He's talking about the grass growing around weeds, growing around it. Wheels are put on stone. No wheels anymore. He made us alive again, together in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave us the very life 
of Christ himself, the same new life with which he quickened him, for it is by grace, his favor, his mercy, which you did not deserve, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of the eternal glory, the salvation of Christ. So, beloved people, the Messiah is coming. I've now divulged a little bit more on that conversation. And remember the aircraft went vertical, then I woke up. That aircraft did not return to the earth. That aircraft did not land back on the earth. So may he prepare the way, may your ears be circumcised, that you may get to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the nation and the church, that please repent. Turn away from sin, sexual sin, immorality, nudity. This dressing of women in immorality in the Western world, the modernism, postmodernism in salvation. He said, turn away from all manner of lies and sin. Be righteous and holy. The Messiah is coming. Time is over. Again, in that meeting, the Lord took me to the meeting in Sika, and he showed me this wonderful revival that's coming, and he's saying that this revival of the soul is about the entry of the church into eternity. May the Lord bless you. Shalom Todaraba. The Messiah is coming. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Be holy, be righteous. Have zero tolerance to sin, blessed people. The kingdom of God is near, and I have seen the Messiah coming. Shalom Todaraba. Todaraba. Todaraba.